In this workshop, we're going to look at making um, another brush. It's still a pattern brush, but it's a little bit more complicated than the twin needle top stitch brush that we created in the previous video. Um, we're going to make a zipper, and this is really to demonstrate that you can make um, brushes made of um, multiple objects, and you can also have um, different um, starts and ends to your brush. So this is useful um, for creating things like zips where you've got a pull at one end and a stop at the other or it may be you're creating a particular kind of arrow. Um, it might be a road with an arrow at, at one end and an arrow tail at the other, whatever you think. So um, again, I'm going to try and create this brush as near as I can in proportion with this garment, which is why I've got this mannequin uh, template open and there's a drawing here. It's actually um, a dress. Um, so I'm going to um, just zoom right in nice and tight like so. And once again, I'm going to use the line segment tool and I'm going to begin by adding a tiny little um, uh, line. This is going to be one point long. Um, again, the angle is going to be set to zero, um, so it looks like this. Then I go to my stroke panel and change my line weight to 0.25. I'm going to add a round cap and corner onto that line. So that's what that line looks like. It's just like the line that we used in our twin needle top stitch. Um, and then I'm going to add another line. So I'm just going to add it here. I'm going to make it two points long. So two PT, same angle, zero, like so. And um, I'm not going to have a round cap and corner on here. Um, but I'm going to make my line weight heavier. So it's going to be a one point thick line. Now I need these to be absolutely centered on each other. So I'm going to select them both and I'm going to use my alignment tools. So I need to horizontally align center like so. Um, this is going to become a continuous line and this is going to be a little dashed stitch line. I then need to make the teeth of my zip. I'm just going to come in even closer. So I'm going to use a rectangle for this and I'm going to line my rectangle up um, on the edge of this um, rect uh, little line here. And I'm just going to come down. That tells me when I'm in the center. I'll make it about so long. Now you'll notice that um, because I've got a one point line weight on this rectangle, um, it's made the shape really big. Um, so I need to take my line weight all the way down to 0 0.25. We've also still got an issue where because of how Illustrator defaults when drawing the lines, it always puts the construction line in the middle of the line weight. So I don't want that. I want this to finish here on this um, edge. So I'm going to change where the construction line goes. <clears throat> So I'm going to align my stroke like so. So it's aligning on the inside. Um, then I'm going to reflect this over. So I'm just going to hold down the Alt key and reflect across the vertical axis like so. And I need to make a copy of that. And then I can move this down like so. Then I'm going to reflect these over. So I'm selecting these two parts and I'm going to use the reflect tool. And I need to be more or less in the middle here. This time I'm reflecting across the horizontal axis. So these are going to end up down here. And again, I need to make a copy. So this is going to form the basis of my zipper stitch. So I'm going to select 
all those elements and go to the brushes panel and make a new brush like so and I'm going to call it zipper and I'm just going to test out how that is going to look to make sure that I haven't made any mistakes so I'm just going to draw a line here and apply that brush and you can see there that it does look like a zip you can see that this little line here this was the two point um, line length with a one point line weight attached to it because I've got no space and no end caps it looks like a continuous solid black line um, and because this line is slightly shorter than the um, the line underneath, even with its cap, um, this now looks like a stitch line, okay? And um, because I reflected it over, I've got the same thing going on on the other side of the zip. Now we're going to create a little pull for our zip. So I'm gonna start off by just drawing um, a rounded rectangle. Um, so I've got the rounded rectangle tool and I'm just going to draw a little square um, so I'm going to hold the shift key to constrain it. Then I need to rotate it around. So I'm using the rotate tool. Um, I'm rotating 45 degrees and then I click OK. And then I'm going to just use the direct selection tool just to pick up these two end points like so. And I'm just going to move them out like that. It's kind of made a little kite shape. Okay. So this is going to form the, um, the engine, if you like, of the, of the zipper. Um, then I'm going to just draw another little rounded rectangle on, on its back. Like so. So just going to vertically align those centrally like that and then I'm going to make um, some little rings these are going to form I don't want a normal little tag on my zip um, I kind of want it to be like a little feature link um, with, a, with a, a ring on the end so I'm going to start off by creating um, an ellipse um, I want it to be proportionate, so let's just deselect that a second. So I'm going to draw from the center. Okay, and I'm constraining it to be a circle. So I'm going to make it about so big. And I'm going to deselect again. And then I'm going to pick this up I think and I'll move it over here it's just easier um, I'm going to just find the center there it is Illustrator is quite good at helping you find um, the middle of objects so I'm going to just draw another uh, circle I'm going to select them both and I'm going to use Pathfinder and I'm going to use this one um, which is minus front Okay, so now I just need to give that a white fill. There we are. So you can see how that's going to look. Um, so I'm going to position that about there. And then I'm going to use another little rounded rectangle um, like so and then I'm going to make another um, circle this time it's going to be quite a bit bigger I'm going to draw from the center again so it's going to look like that and then another one from the center there we go so now I need to pick 
both of those up and I'm going to um, minus front again using Pathfinder. So this needs to be on top, so I'm going to right click and uh, rearrange these. So I'm going to uh, bring that to the front and I'm going to bring this to the front as well. Let's just check. Oh, I've got no fill on there. That's why that's not working. There we are. So that looks pretty much how I want my um, my ring pull to, to work. But the thing is, I need to have um, some um, zipper running behind this. So I'm going to use this. So I'm going to put that there and I'm just going to move it like that and then I can transform again by using keyboard shortcut uh, command or control D depending on whether or not you're using a PC or a Mac and I just need to go as far as there and I'm just going to add a white fill in there like that and I'm going to pick up all these parts of my zip pull, oops, helps if you hold the right key down, need the shift key. And just Nudge them up like so. I could effectively get rid of those like so. And then I can make this into a swatch. I know it's odd, um, but this is what we do. So I'm going to open my swatches panel and um, I'm just going to drag that in and drop it in my, my swatches. So let's just select the whole thing and drag it and drop it there. So you can say it's new pattern swatch. So I'm going to call this zip pull so I can find it again quite easily. And then I can add it onto the front of my line. You can see here this is indicating where the front of the line goes. And if I and there you can see it's applied that to my zipper. So now I just need to um, apply it. If I wanted to, I could add a stop onto my zip. So this time I don't need the pull, so I'm just going to select all those elements. And move them over here. And this time I just want this bit and I'm going to add a little tiny rectangle like so and again I'm going to just put my um, line stroke there, take the line weight down, just going to pop that up so that's a bit tidier and then create 
another rectangle like so oops a daisy and I can just move that to there and then this can become the end of my zipper so I go back to my brushes um, oh, oops a daisy. Um, I just need to turn this into a swatch again. So I'm just going to drag and drop the end of my zip in there. And then I'm looking for where it ends, which is this one here. And it's this. I'm going to apply that to my strokes and let's see what it's done. And there you can see we've got the end stop of our zip. Okay, so now all that remains is for me to add it into my dress. Um, you can see it is a little bit big because it's just really hard drawing um, things that are so tiny. Um, so I'm just going to um, draw a path down I might take it all the way or almost all the way to the waistband like so hit return to stop drawing and apply my zip now it's going to come in too big um, and it's also upside down so let's just see what I can do about that so I could um, flip it so I'm flipping that way and I need to scale it as well. So I'm just going to scale my zip down so it's more in proportion with my garment. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. So that's how we create something that's a little bit more complex where we have um, a start and an end and a middle to our path. Um, and um, I've applied it to my garment and I think that looks okay.